Glad you're watching. Welcome to another episode of my One Pot Wonders. This zucchini and sausage stew is so good. It's fast to make, literally putting everything in the pot. As you chop it, it goes in. Let it simmer. I like to let it go for a couple hours. Uh, if you let it go for more than a couple hours, all the better. And it warms up really well and serving it a couple days later, it gets even better. So let's get started. I have some sausage. We're gonna use a pound and a half, actually I'm gonna use a little bit more, of what I like to start with is an Italian sausage because it has some of the basic seasonings in it, but I do like to spike it up with a little bit more. So this is bulk sausage, Italian, going in the pot. With that, since it's only a pound, I'm going to take some lynx sausage, because I just happen to have it, and take the casing off. Over a medium heat, we're putting all the sausages in the pot. While this is browning, then we're going to cut a couple of onions, peel them, might save the skins for stock. I'm breaking these sausage up into nice chunks for the bottom of the pot. And while this is browning, I'm going to cut these peppers in a nice coarse chunk. Doesn't have to be anything fancy, just a quick chop on them. About a one inch piece is what you want. Stir the sausage and break it up just a little bit. Keep in mind, keep it a little chunky. Sausage is almost brown. Kind of hard to see in the pot. I'll see if I can tip this a little bit getting there. The larger link sausages are just about brown. And we're going to break those into one inch chunks. Then after the onion are cut, we're going to coarse chop some celery. Same thing. About a, about a one inch piece. All right, sausage is relatively nice and brown. I have my onions cut, I have the celery cut. Now, we're going to put the celery in first and the onions in on top of the sausage. We're going to let that cook for a little bit. And to that, I am going to add some pressed garlic because it's fast and easy. Clean garlic cloves and just keep running it through the press because I like that little extra flavor that a press will give you. Yes, minced for sure, not the jarred minced garlic. That pre-done stuff is pretty nasty. I'm not sure it even tastes like garlic, but having said that, get yourself some garlic cloves, peel them, and either slice them. You could slice them for this, but you won't get as much flavor as the press. And the garlic's in the pot. And now we are going to prep up some peppers. Here's the easiest way to well, I should stir this a little bit. That would be nice. And the easiest way to clean a pepper is take your ends off, cut it down the side, open it up, take the seeds out, and if you didn't get all the white membrane off, then you can take that a step farther and just cut this out. And now what you have left is 
a really easy piece to cut into the one inch chunk. And what I do with that, if it gets a little big, I'll take them, cut them in half, cut that in half, and then cut them like that. Now, another tip, cut them with the inside to the top, because even if you have a dull knife, it will go through the inside of the pepper easier than it will to try and cut through the outside. If you have a dull knife, chances are it's pro it could slip going through the outside of the pepper. So just do it from the inside because then you can kind of get away with it a little bit better. And we just rip those out. And then do the same with the orange. Now I'm using, you could use green peppers. I'm using an orange, a yellow, and a red because they're nice sweet peppers. And I love the flavor they give it. The green peppers just give it a different flavor altogether. But I like the, the flavor and the color. I like to keep the board clean of the seeds. I mean, if some, if some get in there, it's okay. Then, we'll cut these up into one inch chunks. Make it real easy, no fancy knife skills you have to have for this one. It's another way to do it. And then bunch it and stack it. And same with this. Whoops, I should get a little of that membrane out. That might be a little too much. And the same with this side. Take that out. And we'll cut these. Okay, so the peppers are ready to go. We'll stir this up again. Now I want to layer some seasonings in here. I like to layer the seasoning sort of in the middle. One, so they don't brown on the bottom. And two, when everything else goes in, it'll be easier to mix them all together. So you could use a pre-made Italian seasoning mix. However, if you don't happen to have that, you don't have to have that particular mix. So we're gonna put in about two solid teaspoons of fresh basil, more or less if you really like it. I have some fennel seed that someone grew and gave me some a couple years ago. It held up really well because it's the whole seed. And the reason I add a little bit extra fennel is because some of the Italian sausages are a little bit light on fennel flavoring. And fennel's like a classic with Italian sausage, so I put a little extra in. We're gonna put a little bit of oregano in. Some people really like oregano, some people really hate it. It's gonna be about a teaspoon and a half. I like a little sweet marjoram in mine. Having said that, not too much, probably about a teaspoon of that. And depending on the sausage you're using, you might wanna add just a dash of crushed red pepper. I'm not fond of really hot and spicy, that's just a me thing, so I go a little bit lighter on it. And yes, you could use a hot Italian sausage, but unless you know exactly what you're buying, it might be better to add your own. We're also going to add some fresh pepper, and we're going to add about a tablespoon of kosher salt, and we're going to add a couple teaspoons of sugar. I'm not adding a lot because these tomatoes are really good. They're Laval tomatoes. Um, they're not San Marzano. Oh wait, no, these are. I sometimes don't get the San Marzano, but these are San Marzanos, which are mean, which means that they are growing in the San Marzano region. And the Laval, they're DOP, which ensures that they are San Marzanos. Anyway, these are really good, but. Before that, we'll stir these seasonings in, and then we can add the tomatoes. Now these are whole tomatoes, and the reason I do the whole tomatoes is because I think the flavor is better. 
these tomatoes are packed with a lot of their own juices as you can see it's a nice thick tomato in there having said that you do get what you pay for when you buy tomatoes a lot of them just pack them in water which they don't have quite the flavor but because they're a little more expensive I use every last drop out of the tomato can and that I'm getting out with a rubber spatula because you really don't want to waste these the whole tomato you don't really have to crush or uh, dice it because it will break down on its own so we're going to mix that in all right so the tomatoes are mixed in we've got the celery and the onion in there tomatoes are starting to break down a little bit now I'm going to put the peppers in and then while this is coming up to a simmer I'm going to add the chopped zucchini this is simple no special nice skills take your ends off these you really don't want to save for stock so my woodchuck's gonna have a field day or my raccoon whichever they're gonna love their dinner tonight and then what I like to do with the zucchini is cut them in half and then a one inch piece from there by that I'm giving it a much better appearance in my opinion than just putting a round in there and then these are going to go to the pot what's going to happen is this soup is going to go to the stove and it's going to simmer for a couple hours wow so check that out doesn't that look great it's nice and colorful it's going to be really tasty when it's done and little to no effort so it's basically done now you could taste this for seasonings now which I think I'll do however you don't get the full effect of the seasonings until this is cooked for a couple hours but we'll taste it anyway it's on the right path so I'm gonna cover this it's gonna go to the stove for a couple hours well bubbling away on the reheat from a few days ago I made this the wonderful zucchini and sausage stew this is so good after it sits for a couple of days you have no idea it actually keeps if you keep it really cold in the refrigerator it'll keep for two weeks so I have warmed it up and as you can see the vegetables cook up really nice the sausage and it turns out to be more like a stew than a soup it's actually a really good one pot wonder and you can serve it for lunch for a light supper add some bread or salad or not what I like to do just did this a couple days ago actually is put it in the bowl and then you can add a little drizzle of olive oil on top of it and then to serve it with bread or a grilled cheese or the salad I always fresh crab pepper just about everything and it could get a little parmesan on top but it really doesn't need it this on its own is quite tasty but to have a slice of bread with it so that the bread acts as a little dipper excellent now you can take the bread one step farther too have a little bowl of olive oil next to it and use the bread or you could make garlic toast that's a really good idea to do with bread put it in the toaster or under the broiler rub it with a fresh garlic clove and then olive oil it and a little salt but it really doesn't need anything anyway give the zucchini and sausage stew a try it freezes really really well 
and you'll find it's really nice to have in the refrigerator for a chilly day or just when you don't feel like cooking but want some substance. So in my one pot wonder recipes we have the beef chuck chili. I garnished it with sour cream, white cheddar, and tomatillo salsa. And I have a zucchini and sausage stew, excellent stuff. And the leftover split pea ham with a little tomato and curry. If those that don't like split pea, try it with the tomato and curry because they won't even know that there's split peas in it. It's quite good with no added fat of cream to thicken it or make it become creamy. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you give all these a whirl and I hope you enjoy them.